Uh, okay, so we'll try it from the top. Here All we right. go. <clears throat> Skip Martin of Roma Craft Tobacco, thank you so much for having us into your space to teach us the essence of cigar smoking. Do you do, you do yeah. this kind of thing often? We do it every day. That's that's what we do for a living. Uh, you're always hosting YouTube crews that are teaching well, them how to smoke cigars. Basically, smoking, teaching people how to enjoy cigars, drinking bourbon, drinking beer. So I did not expect this place to be such an amazing experience from beginning to end. I know that you guys work out of here. You fulfill sales. You keep uh, 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 you know distributors and suppliers happy. But it's clear that you guys went out of your way to make this an astonishingly awesome place to work at. You're either sleeping, working, or very little time doing things you want to do. So uh, basically we figured out how to do what we want to do and then how to make money doing it. So we built this uh, facility really uh, as a functional space for uh, receiving and distributing cigars in the United States. Also for hosting our business partners, uh, retail tobacconists from across the country and also customers who visit Austin. I mean, Austin's a great place to visit and really it's a physical representation of our brand. I think that's the part that I love the most is because I've been to uh, sales areas and I and we run a warehouse over at scamstuff.com. It is not as gorgeous as this. The moment I walked in, I was like, you have to be hosting amazing events here. Can you, can you walk me around and tell me the story of this whole place? Sure, so where we did the uh, podcast today, this is our craft beer bar. Uh, people find it kind of amazing that we don't actually sell beer. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine that somebody wanders in, they're like, uh, I'll take an IPA, please, and you're like, get lost. Right, so Mike drinks a lot of coffee, so we have this really amazing uh, coffee station here, kind of keep us awake, and then over time, our customers have sent us beers. Well, you know, we travel all over the world, we sell cigars all over the world, so you know, we pick up limited things from Belgium, from Denmark, from, you know, the Trappist beers. You know, I think we have something like 2,600 unique beers and something like 6,000 bottles. I guess so. this is the thing about when you're really, and you, I'm sure you understand this, but it's like, it's not just about the cigars, it's about the lifestyle, right? It's like when somebody comes here, when somebody runs a cigar shop and they meet with you and they talk about carrying your cigars, you want to give them the the essence of what it is uh, to carry your stuff. Yeah, so, you know, cigars, premium cigars is A, a luxury brand. It's also a handcrafted artisanal product, very much like uh, small vineyard wines or small uh, distillery bourbons or craft beer. So our, really our company is, is, was established and built around the idea of merging the small craft beer kind of brand lifestyle aspect in the United States with the long tradition and legacy of making cigars in Cuba and in other countries. One of the things that I definitely noticed, just to actually on my way to the restroom over here, is you guys obviously have a very passionate fan base. This Hall of Fame, you were saying these are all social media posts of fans of your cigars that you've sent in and you have made real up on this wall? Yeah, so social media uh, is a great equalizer for small companies these days. You don't have to have huge marketing budgets. and. We've grown our business at the consumer level and customers, you know, like to take pictures of our products. They like to take pictures of the, the situations that they're in when they're uh, enjoying our products. And we generally select uh, one or two of these a day uh, and, and feature it as a part of, you know, hey, this, this is one of our customers and this is what we do. So. And this is all on the Instagram feed that we're seeing right here, right? Yeah, this is the Romacraft Tobacco Instagram feed. Uh, we do a picture of the day. We probably, on average, uh, replace this wall about once every 200 days or so. See, that's the part that blows me away. Like, like as the charlatan, as the host of Scam School, I think, make it once, never touch it. Tell everyone how great you are. But but you guys, this really is a living wall and a, a continuously changing tribute to how dedicated your fans are. Yeah, and it's a reminder to us about why we're doing what we're doing. When we're done with one, uh, we'll take it, sign the back of it, write a note to the customer, and uh, mail it to them. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Is there a story behind the logo that you guys put together? Uh, yeah, so uh, the Cairo is a Roman symbol of Constantine. Uh, Mike and I are both kind of Roman Catholic background. I'm Italian, so that's the Rosales and Martin comes comes kind of a double meaning of Roma. Uh, but really it's a T and an X for Texas, which is where we're based, uh, but it's based on that symbol. Was there a central design aesthetic that you guys had for all of this? Because of, I don't know if you guys hired a designer or you guys waved your arms and just said what kind of stuff you like or what? Uh, that was me. I pr I'm pretty... Uh, 
you know, really, like I said, it's a physical manifestation of our brand. I mean, you know, the lyrics on the wall here, you can see, um, is uh, kind of like from our, you know, history, culturally, uh, kind of, you know, what our, what our kind of vibe is. Uh, a lot of these lyrics represent uh, kind of our approach to thinking about things. Uh, pretty much everything in here, without exception, is handmade by some craftsman or artisan. Uh, John Rubio from The Beerus did our uh, brand posters on the wall. Which here. look amazing, by the way. John Rubio is wicked talented. And I, I just now found out. At more than just drinking beer. New England flag and banner hand sews these uh, flags for us. These signs are hand carved by one of our customers. Uh, the tables were handmade by a company in San Antonio called Wonderlust. The bar and a lot of the metal aspects were made by a company in Houston, uh, Dire Metal Works. Um, you know, we don't really buy anything off the shelf. Almost everything here is something that some craftsman made. And, you know, it's kind of like feeding back into this, this community of craftsmen. So one of the things I notice upon walking in is there are not many uh, sales area slash functioning warehouses that have a merch shop. But again, this is another, can, can, can we poke around in here? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, show me around. We actually sell or give away a lot of our uh, uh, branded merchandise. Um, th this, this is just kind of, it's not completely finished yet. Um, we're going to display the products we make in here. A lot of what you see over here are lighters and cutters from uh, licensing deals that we have with Zycar. Is, uh, I'm sorry, is this, is this, what is this? This is uh, a cigar we, yeah. one of our guys made yeah. in the factory. Sure, you can Wait, one of your guys made this? Yeah, it's a hand rolled uh, wrapper filler binder. It's a, I think it's about 260 ring gauge. Oh my God, <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, I, I, okay. Uh, so the uh, the femur, which is actually a production cigar, this this one is one cigar per box. Uh, this is a cigar that we actually uh, produce. You sell these? We made about a hundred of them. Okay, but 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 this this one was a gag, I assume. But this well, one this one is a, a, a you move these. It was really just to see how big you could make a cigar. So I mean, you can make a cigar as big as this room if you really wanted to. But these are actually made. Exactly the same way a, a small cigar is made. This is amazing. And so these are the different brands that you guys put together. How, how many years do you do you release new brands regularly, or how do you go about that? No, we we, we have four uh, core brands in the U.S. and one for Europe. Uh, we've released. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we have about sixty-two different SKUs within those brands of different sizes and shapes. Um, we have some products that are limited that come out seasonally, uh, kind of like the same way in the craft beer market where certain kind of like factory release things come out. But you know, our core products are, are really 90% of our business. Now, you guys are, I assume, legally restricted from selling direct to consumers, or no, how we, we have a re we have a retail permit. We could sell cigars directly to consumers. We like like locally, but or can you ship internationally? Either or? either or. Oh wow! Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, we just don't do that. Um, we, we partner with Retail Tobacconists. We talked a lot in the video about the value of having a local, experienced, engaged uh, tobacconist, and we can't supplement you know that aspect. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. It, well, and that's the thing, is, is so much of the experience, as we learned about smoking a cigar, is not about the actual experience of smoking the cigar. It's about the, the people, the stories, the, uh, uh, the the interaction with places on the other side of the globe that you are experiencing right. in a very visceral way. Right. Uh, so, okay, so out here, this is uh, where when somebody calls in, I assume, and they place an order and they say, give me a bunch of uh, Roma cigars, uh, they're talking to somebody from here? Yeah, so Mike and Danny work out here. We have... Uh about 250 to 300 retail partners in the U.S. Uh, we have a couple in Central South America, six or seven, and then we have about uh, 80 in the EU. Wait, it just occurred to me that, that you probably have to think about things like language difficulties and so on. Do you have multilingual staff or? Well, uh, all three of us speak Spanish. I live in Nicaragua, and that's where I spend 75% of my time at the factory. Um, Fabrica de Tobacco Nica Sueño in Esteli, Nicaragua is uh, also our company. We have about 65 employees there. Everything from uh, tobacco processing to uh, rollers and bunchers um, that actually make the cigars, people who package the cigars, 
shipping logistics, administrative accounting. All okay, so in my, in my mind, I'm picturing a big group of, you say, what, 60? 62. So, okay, uh, so 62 people in Nicaragua are making the cigars. Uh, I assume they put them in some kind of packaging on a pallet and they, uh, they, they ship them to distribution centers like this one. And, and did you say there's another one in Europe? In Germany, in Bunder, Germany. Okay, and so they, they ship those out. And uh, where, where's the nuts and bolts, the hands-on stuff with all that stuff? So we actually select tobacco sometimes four or five years before we use it. Uh, most, on average, it's probably about a year and a half, two years before we use it. Uh, we supervise and manage the, the processing, the fermentation uh, and aging of that tobacco. That tobacco is then moved into the factory, processed, humidified, dehumidified. Um, that is used to produce cigars. Those cigars age uh, in a finished good state for about six to eight months. And then those cigars are a label and a cellophane and in a box. And then those are packaged up. We receive one of those shipments about every eight to 12, 10 days, eight to 12 days. Holy cow, you guys are moving a lot. Yeah, we make about 1.2 million cigars a year. Um, for a handmade product, it's a large number. It's about uh, 25, 30,000 per week. Uh, but in really, compared to some of the larger uh, handmade cigar companies, that make 30, 60, 100 million, uh, that's a pretty small number. So, so on average, like the difference between a craft brewery versus an Anheuser-Busch or whatever? Uh, somewhat, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still a, all a handcrafted product. Uh, right. The, uh, the average of, of companies that sell to retail tobacco shops is probably between eight and 15 million cigars a year. Wow. Oh, okay, so they package them up, they throw them in a, I assume, on a pallet, right? And then, right. And then they ship them up here. Where, where do they end up when they're here? Yeah, so they come into our shipping area, which we'll look at next, and then they go into our warehouse. Uh, they don't stay there long. We, we sell them pretty much as fast as we can make them. I mean, every, yeah, if you're getting shipments every eight days, I would imagine, so. Most of the time, 80, 90% of what we receive is already sold by the time we receive it. So we, we move through, the, through it pretty quickly, pretty much like a Dark Lord, day at, at three Floyds or you know those kinds of things sure so, I will, well yeah I'd love to see the behind sure. the scenes because sure. we can look at our uh, lounge here this room specifically is for us just to kind of hang out and smoke uh, a lot of times we get on a call it's a little quieter in here um, or uh, just playing Xbox or smoking with friends that come over, watching football, whatever. And, and so that's, uh, man, I love, this is the thing I love about the small businesses, is the freedom to do stuff like this. <laughs> You're like, uh, hey, Mom, I'm gonna go play Xbox for a bit. Okay, go for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, our, that's the way our business works. I mean, people come in when they want, when they want to come in, they, if they need to take their kids to school, they leave, take, you know, take their kids to school, pick them up. They come back, you know, pretty much it's a small team, so, you know, there's no official start time, there's no official end time, there's no vacation uh, policy, there's no, um, you know, we, we have health insurance for everybody. Sure. You know, there's, you know so it's, uh, it's great to have uh, the opportunity just to have a small business like this, that where, where you can do something, you know, you really enjoy doing, but then pick really solid team members or family. And, uh, and it seems like that's the heart of it, right? Is you need somebody who cares about it, who understands that you have either unlimited vacation time or no vacation time. That's up to you. How much right. do you like? Yeah, when we have team goals. I mean, when you came in here today, I think Mike's kids were running around. I did. I saw that. In fact, yeah. I, for a brief second, I was like, am I in the right place? <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I have a one-year-old uh, that runs around the factory. I have a 22-year-old that works here with me. So Yeah, what a great playground, though. Yeah. Uh, okay, so when the giant pallets of cigars arrive, okay. how are they processed? Sure, we can come back and see that. Yeah, so this room is where we warehouse uh, the product that comes in from Nicaragua. Uh, everything comes in in these master crates. Um, by, by product, um, we're really focused on super efficient uh, logistics and supply chain uh, aspects. We use a lot of uh, lean and sigma. I don't know if you're familiar with these but corporate terms. Proper, proper business practices. That right. sounds like pro stuff. That's above my pay grade. <laughs> yeah, so everything here is focused on flow. So everything comes in, it flows through here. Uh, it gets uh, put, on, put on the shelf in a very specific place. Um, all of our orders and and all of our pick lists and everything are exactly in this order uh, for order accuracy and for efficiency. 
So one of the things, two of the things that I noticed, number one, I see, are, are these all humidifiers? Yeah, these are humidifiers and you see connected to a control mechanism that, that maintains the air conditioning, the fan, and as well as the humidity. And the second thing I noticed is that you could feel this constant circulation thanks to this gargantuan fan up here. And uh, is, is there a reason that, that you're keeping the air flowing around? Yeah, the humidity rises counterintuitively, uh, kind of like fog. So. Um, when the humidity gets kind of rises, the fan kicks on and destratifies the humidification. Uh, man, that's amazing. So how long will most of this stuff sit in here before it gets shipped off somewhere else? Um, most of the stuff you see in here probably came in uh, on Wednesday, and most of it, mo this is probably about a quarter of what came in, and, pro and uh, this will all be gone probably before the next shipment next uh, Friday. Is, is freshness something that's valued? Because I mentioned you mentioned that in the construction of the cigars, that aging is part of the process, but then once they're aged and they're perfect, do you want to get them out really fast? No, freshness doesn't matter. As long as they're maintained, the temperature and humidity, mm -hmm. uh, as long as that is maintained, uh, you can smoke cigars that are 50 years old. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, I, I am still having a hard time wrapping my mind around 1.2 million cigars. Is that, it, I, I assume that the facility in Nicaragua is much larger? Yeah, the, this facility is about 4,000 square feet. The facility in Nicaragua is about three times that. Wow. Given that you're splitting your time between Nicaragua and here, uh, is, is this like a vacation for you for the time that you come home or is this the real work and Nicaragua is the vacation? Well, mainly when I come up, it's for legal issues, accounting, long-term planning, uh, uh, specific events or uh, just uh, the date, you know, kind of managing kind of, you know, what happens here at the office. Mike, Mike and Jamie manage the office uh, on the day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Mike is on the road a lot, probably half of his time uh, mm -hmm. every year. Like uh, he did the event with us, the show tonight with us, and is immediately off tomorrow to to Kentucky and to uh, Ohio. Um, I go back to Nicaragua tomorrow, and and I'll be back next month. Holy cow! Uh, well, I'll tell you what, man, it is really a pleasure and a treat to see so much energy and effort put into making. Uh, a, a cool, relatively boutique space, so approachable. Like, like this really feels like a spiritual hub of the entire organization. Yeah, like I said, it's uh, the third time. It's a, it's a manifestation of our brand, and it's, a, it's really, uh, it's our values. Um, I, you know, the, uh, you know, it's a, like a, it's a handcrafted product. We, you know, we try to be forward-thinking and innovative, but at the same time, there's these very time-honored. Uh, traditions and legacies that go back hundreds of years that you have to maintain in order to do it correctly. Uh, dude, well, thank you for doing the episodes, and more importantly, thank you for yeah. a peek behind the curtain. You're uh, welcome. This is fantastic. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Now, this. This actually stretches out. I, I can tell. It goes.